the features uh, made available in first uh, general availability of this product in uh, July 24th, and the second part of that actually made available almost a week ago. Uh, so we will go through that, and you will see these new features through demos that I show. Uh, all right, Power BI introduction. Uh, so um, Power BI actually is uh, uh, a, a cloud type of uh, business intelligence uh, solution from Microsoft that is a kind of a self-service solution, uh, but it is not uh, something that is just for business users or just for Power users. Power BI can be so much powerful that can be used in enterprise applications as well. So Power BI is uh, um, actually a solution that works on top of five main components. These five main components are Power Query, Power Pivot, Power View, Power Map, and Power Q&A. Lots of power in this session. Uh, so, uh, I'll go through one, uh, these one by one very quickly. Uh, Power Query is an, e uh, an ETL tool. It's kind of a, uh, actually a self-service ETL tool, which uh, can be available in as part of Excel. So if you have Excel 2013 or 2010, that can be downloaded as an add-in, a free add-in for Excel. If you have Excel 2016, then it's actually a built-in add-in for uh, Excel. So you will have a sheet, uh, sorry, a tab for Power Query, and in that tab you can do self-service, uh, actually type of data mashup, data transformation, some data transformation, <coughs> sorry, some data transformation options are available, and you can get data from many places, uh, join tables, those kind of stuff. And this works with the functional language in the back end, which is very powerful language called M. So that's Power Query. Uh, Power Pivot is a tabular model. This Power Pivot has been uh, in the market for, uh, I think, for a while, and uh, most of you probably know about that. Power Pivot is a tabular model of uh, data modeling engine of uh, Microsoft. This works based on X velocity in memory uh, engine. It's quite fast uh, model to work with, and that's again part of Excel. Uh, you can create measures, you can create hierarchies, you can write some uh, DAX code, data analysis expression code for creating uh, actually measures as you want. Uh, it's kind, kind of a powerful modeling uh, type of engine. Not exactly similar as analysis services multidimensional, but something similar to that in another Word. It's in memory and it's much faster and it's kind of more uh, self-service type of solution for data model. And the Power View. Power View is a visualization element of Power BI. You can create interactive uh, dashboards and interactive charts and uh, it has some ability to highlight, to do filtering. Uh, you have some special charts in that, like it's that scatter chart with a play axis, with a play time axis, or <clears throat> some stuff like that. Power View, again, can be installed on uh, uh, top of Excel, uh, or it can be built in on that. Uh, all right, Power Map is the other component of Power BI. The Power Map is just for a geographical type of visualization. You can have 3D geographical visualization, and um, in that 3D geographical visualization, you can have different layers, a layer to show height of the uh, column bars, and another layer to show a heat map, those kind of stuff. You can create stories and tours and speak about your data stories through uh, some video scenarios that you build in Power Map. Power Map is, again, as part of the Excel, and uh, you can actually download that uh, as a part of Excel. Uh, Power Q&A is the uh, last component of Power BI. Uh, it's an engine that you can ask questions. It's a natural uh, Q&A engine for uh, answering questions. So you ask your questions from the data model and you get responses. Like, for example, in this picture you can see that uh, the question was about teams that scored in uh, FIFA World Cup and the response showed on the map. 
So it works on top of the data model, which is Power Pivot, and shows the result set with Power B. It's a very interesting type of uh, visualization that you will have, uh, not just the visualization, but also the Q&A engine for that. We will go through that. OK, so these are five main components of Power BI. Now, hey, Reza. Uh, yes? Uh, so there are a few questions. Do you want to take the questions now, or do you want to do that at the end? Uh, if there is, yeah, yeah, we can go to the discussion. All right. So one question is, can you link a power map visual to a power view more detailed view? Uh, at the moment, actually, power map is kind of a uh, um, component of uh, Power BI, which is kind of isolated from other components of Power BI. So Power Map is its own uh, component, its own actually editor, its own uh, type of visualization, and uh, it's not connected to Power View that you can, let's say, drill through into Power View, or from Power Map you could drill into to Power View. Uh, it's not interconnected at the moment, but uh, it might be in the list of uh, Microsoft Power BI team. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but the best way to work with Power View is to work with that separately as a whole separate data visualization engine to just respond uh, the questions and tell the stories about your, your special type of visualization. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Second question is Power BI and Data Zen. Can you tell which is better? Uh, Power BI, Data Zen. These are actually two different tools, I uh, have to say. Data Zen is quite good. It's quite good tool for uh, working, especially with mobile devices. It has quite good uh, type of visualization. Power BI is also supported in mobile devices. It has quite good visualization. It's on highly actually uh, support by Microsoft team nowadays. They make quite a lot of changes and they make quite a lot of progress and enhancement you see and you hear about Power BI news every uh, week or every month and they are making quite good changes. And these, I believe, will be combined into a one product in the future. So I don't think the, there'll be kind of a comparison between which one is the best, you will have actually a bit of both. All right, great. Uh, third question was, to use Power BI, do I need to have data in cloud? And if yes, is there something similar for on-premises databases? Uh, uh, Power BI can actually connect to on-premises data sets. So uh, it's not a limitation that you should have your data on cloud. Power BI can work with the data on the cloud and also can work with the data on premises. It's actually uh, a decision of using a personal gateway. If that personal gateway be installed and configured, then it can connect to on premises as well as on the cloud. Awesome. Thanks. I think that's all the questions okay. that we had. Sorry, yeah. sorry to cut you off. Oh. Well, that's okay. Okay. Uh, so let's continue. For Power BI desktop. So, uh, You've seen Power BI components. Now what is the Power BI desktop? Power BI desktop is actually a combination of, it's a tool that combines three components in a single editor, I would say. Uh, those three components are Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power View. So Power Query actually to connect to the data source and fetch data from those data sources and do the do kind of transformation, manipulation, data mesh. Power Pivot for providing the model of that data, adding some measures, creating relationships, and Power View for the visualization on top of that to show the results set. So combination of all of these actually has been released as a single tool called Power BI Desktop that you can go to Power BI website and download that for free. There are 64-bit and 32-bit version of that. And uh, you can do everything in Power BI. You don't need Excel then. And uh, when you've done your work in Power BI Desktop, you can publish that into a Power BI website for later use. Uh, so you can connect to many data sources. That's actually supported by Power Query component of the Power BI. 
desktop, as you see, many data sources supported. There are data sources like uh, software as a service, like, for example, uh, MailChimp, like Google Analytics, GitHub, quite a lot of uh, sources like that. You can connect to data sources as well, like Oracle database, like MySQL, uh, Azure SQL database, or on-premises SQL database, uh, SSAS, or those kind of things. And you can model the data as you actually model your data in Power Pivot model. We will go through those in demos. And uh, you can visualize data as you want in the reporting side of that, which is quite interesting type of visualization. So I think the best way to go through that is to run through a very basic demo to see how it works. So I'll show you a Power BI desktop demo first. When you install Power BI desktop, uh, then you will get this tool that uh, gives you ability to actually build dash not dashboards, charts, and connects to data. So this is the first view of Power BI desktop. This is the first screen that in this screen you will have some uh, introduction videos as well, which is quite good videos, how to build reports, how to actually make some changes in your queries. You have connections to tutorials online and forums as well that you can ask questions. So let me start with the experience. Uh, your experience usually starts with getting the data. So let me start with get data. For the purpose of this, uh, actually, um, quick demo, I, uh, I'm using POPs. Uh, Actually, database pubs is one of Microsoft's sample databases. It has been uh, there for a long time. So I connect to a, a SQL Server database for this demo. You can see that quite a lot of data sources is supported file data sources, databases, Azure, and some other data sources like Facebook, like many other data sources that you can connect to Active Directory or whatever. So I connect to SQL Server database for now. And I type in my server name. It's my local server. I don't type my database name. I can even provide SQL database, SQL uh, statement to get part of the data, but I just want to get a list of databases first and do the rest here in Power Query. OK, uh, I have a POPS database here, so I expand that. and. Those actually tables that I'm interested in to get some information from that is authors. I can also have a look at what the data looks like here. So this is the Power Query component of Power BI. As you see, it's not something that has a Power Query uh, title somewhere here or something like that. But the, I'm saying that this is the component that provides it. OK, I'm interested in authors, in sales, stores and the title, and title author, OK? Uh, so Pubs database is actually a database of books, some books and titles published and sold through stores. So there are sales information about books and titles and their authors, OK? I want to load this information. Before loading this information, I press Edit. When I press Edit, the Query Editor window will open. And in this query editor window, I see actually how this data uh, uh, actually shaped. I can uh, add some columns. I can remove some columns. Let's say, for example, for the stores, I don't need street address. So I can simply just remove that column. I can add some other columns. And this will understand the relationship between tables as well, because I used a SQL Server database. and these couple of columns here shows the relationship of this stores table to discounts table and sales table, which actually I'm not interested to use those relationships. So I'm just removing these relationships here because Power Pivot later on in the model will actually have those relationships as well. So I'm just removing this. So you can do any changes in this data set as you want and just leave it as is for now. So that's my data 
uh, source. As you can see, four tables I have here. And I don't do any other changes. I just close this editor. This is Power Query Editor. And I just close this and load it into my model. And when I close this, you can see that this is already loading into the model. And in that model, uh, I will have the data and the uh, structure of data. It's quite a small data set. So I can see the relationship of that here. You ha here, I have the relationship diagram. That's one of the new features of Power BI from the release of uh, 24th of July. So I have the relationship diagram here, similar to uh, what we have in Power Pivot. So I have sales, which is kind of my main table. And that sales actually is connected to stores and titles. And title is connected to authors through title authors. This is my model, so I can do some changes here. For example, I don't need title author table for user view. User doesn't need to see that, so I just hide this in report view. I can hide some columns as well or do some changes, or I can change these relationships. But at the moment, relationships are fine. For example, title is related to sales based on title ID and it's kind of one to many relationship. So you can do all of these kind of changes. At the moment, I don't do anything else. Uh, the change that I want to make here is actually having a revenue column in sales uh, actually table. In sales table, I have quantity sold, uh, but I don't have price. Price is actually part of the title here. So I can multiply quantity sold by the price to get the revenue out of that sales transaction. There might be some discounts, those kind of things, but I want to keep that simple. So I go to another tab. This is the data tab. Uh, and in this tab, I want to create, actually, uh, my calculated column. So my calculated column, I want that to be in sales. I click on that. This shows me the preview of that sales table. And here, I create a new column. Let's call this revenue. And this revenue is actually quantity. When I say quantity, you see that this uh, distinguished the uh, table name as well. Sales inside the bracket quantity. This is actually DAX uh, writing. So we are in Power Pivot components of Power BI desktop right now with writing this DAX expression. So quantity multiplied by actually the price which comes through title. Sorry, which comes through title. Uh, because title is another table, so I have to get data from that table. And that table is actually a related table to this. We have a special uh, DAX function called related. Related brings data from a related table based on the relationship defined in the relationship diagram. So I say I want the price from title as a revenue. And you can see that this is the revenue right now. It's showing me the values for each column. And I can even change the data type of that. It's whole number now, but I want this to be currency, general currency, I would say. And this shows me that as a currency. I can do some other measures, those kind of things as well, but let's keep that simple. And uh, now I go to the report side. So you see that we have three uh, tabs here, uh, relationship tabs for building relationship data, for creating measures, those kind of things, which are these two are for Power Pivot. And the report side is actually the Power View component that we are using, an enhanced version of Power View, I have to say. OK, all right, let's build something uh, here. So I want uh, this. Uh, this is my visualization uh, component. I have all fields here and visualization items here. So I want to see the total revenue, so I just click on that. It shows me a column chart. This is the default view of that. I want to see that as a card view. So this shows me the total, the grand total of the sales. So I have grand total of the sales with just a card view. Card view, just a simple 
view of that. I can build another view as well. Let's say I want to see quantity sold as a different chart. If you want to create a different one, you should click on the blank area and then build something else. Okay, I have quantity sold and for those quantity sold, I want to bring authors as well. I do have author first name and last name, but not the full name. So I can create a full name for that as well in my data expression here or even in my query. So let me just simply create that in my query. So in my query, I add a column, I add a custom column, I call that full name, and that full name will be actually author first name, concatenated, concatenation actually character is ampersand in Power Query uh, with the last name. Okay, so that's the full name created easily. I just close this and apply. It apply changes in that and you can directly see that full name is actually created here. So I bring that full name as access here. So right now, and let me change the type of that to a bar chart. So, so here I can see now that these are authors and the quantity of their book sold in, um, in actually the database that we have. Uh, we can uh, even actually uh, highlight some part of that. For example, I want to color saturate these actually visualization based on the quantity sold. So I will bring quantity sold in color saturation. So we highlight the uh, authors that have the uh, most uh, books actually sold here. That's again a new feature of Power BI desktop which is a great feature to have, right? So I can have different type of visualization. You've seen just a column chart now. I can have a map. So I click on the map. This shows me the map blank area. I can add some information here. For example, in stores, or let's say city of authors. Let's go to stores, that's I think is better. So I'll bring uh, city of stores in location. So this shows me the location that my stores is located, Seattle, Portland, and some other places. Uh, I want these to show the revenue out of that. So I bring revenue into the values. So you can see some revenues are here. I have also a city here. This city might not be exactly in uh, this part of the map as located. The reason that it shows this here because uh, this map using Bing map, Bing map is something like Google map. Uh, it's a search engine for map and this is already searching only based on the city name. So that city name might be uh, in two different countries. In three different countries. So for better visualization here with map, usually it's better to have a kind of full address, latitude, longitude, or even if you have a city, just city, it's better to have states and country before that to actually visualize that bit, right? Okay, so you can see that I have this kind of visualization here. I can now uh, even put a legend on that based on the state of that. So if I bring state into the legend. Now you can see that this shows me this information colored by the state of that. And the size of bubble shows me actually where I, uh, uh, I have the I have more sales, those kind of things. So this is kind of a map view that you can create. I can also create a slicer for this data to show me how actually this data uh, looks. So we have a slicer here. Let me just double click, just click on that slicer. So this shows me then an empty slicer. In empty slicer, I want to slice this data by 
actually publication year of that. In titles, we have actually the publication year. Um, no, we don't. We have publication date. But if I choose that date, it's quite a lot of dates here to show. So it's better always to see just the year. So I go to edit queries to fetch out just the year part of that date. So you see this publication date here. I want to create a new column. So I go to add column. And this column is a kind of column that I want to get from the date. And from the date, I just want to get year of this publication date. OK? Now you can see that this is the year information which I have. and I close and apply. As you see, it's quite easy to use Power Query. After doing that, I have my year information. I go back to my data model, to the titles. I see the year here. It's showing as a decimal number. It's not a decimal number, definitely. It's a whole number, because decimal would have some decimal places that I won't I don't want to see that in this way. Then I go to the report side. OK, I'll bring my slicer again. And in this slicer, I put year here. So you can see that I have different years. And if I click on them, I can see how the data changes through, right? Let me add the last piece of visualization here as well, which is actually a tree map. A tree map is kind of a visualization. If you want to visualize something like multiple column chart, multiple categories, it would be quite good visualization of that. So let me bring a tree map. In this tree map, I want to show the titles. Sorry. Um, the type, type of titles, and the revenue of the sales. So this shows me psychology books or business books or those kind of things. Then I want to see titles underneath that details as well. So this shows me a view of that. For example, in psychology, is anger the enemy or something like that. So this is kind of a good visualization on top of that. So I have this components in this visualization items all selected. These are interacted with each other. So if I choose psychology only this title, this shows me uh, who authors of these titles are and whereabouts in uh, actually my database in the map they have been sold or for this title. Or I can even go through that. For example, this author, which titles this author actually published, or any other authors, or I can use Slicer as well. And the revenue only shows me the revenue based on the highlighted section. OK, so that's a kind of sample of Power Map visualization, getting data experience, doing some changes in the model. It's quite easy to work with. And as you've seen, it's not you know, quite a lot of effort to work with. OK, let me continue the slides. Uh, so that's, uh, so you've seen Power BI desktop uh, application. It was quite easy to work with. It was kind of an editor for your Power BI solution. After you build your Power BI solution, you can publish that into the Power BI website. Power BI website is a, a HTML5 supported website that you can connect to that through any uh, actually, web browsers and even from mobile devices. Uh, I'll show you how to publish to that. And uh, uh, actually, Power BI has mobile applications for Android, Apple, and Windows as well that you can download, easily download, and use it. All of these features that I showed today for Power BI is all for free, and you don't have to pay anything for that. Uh, OK, so let me. Just deploy that existing report, the report that I have built into, 
into the Power BI. So for deploying that, I can do the publish. Before publish, I can save, or if I say publish, it will ask me to save automatically. So let me just save that here as as BA first. Oh, let's put a better name. Pops analysis spitter. So I save that with Pops analysis name and I publish that. When I publish that, if you have, if you don't have a Power BI account, this will bring a window for you to log in into your Power BI account. And if you do have, then it's just automatically published that into the Power BI website. Uh, if you don't have a Power BI account, you can just go and create a Power BI account. It's so simple. You just go into the Power BI uh, dot com and just enter your uh, company email address, and you will be there. So that's my Power BI account under the Power BI website. Here I can see only dashboards and visualization and reports that made available for me or I have published here to view. Okay, so here is the POPs analysis as you see in this report. This is the same report that I built over there and I have full feature here. I uh, have everything those highlighting features, everything that I had there, it's also available here as well, which is quite nice and easy. And I can build some dashboards on top of this as well. This is just the uh, actually Power BI website view of that uh, as a report. I can build some dashboards. Here in Power BI website, I can even get data from somewhere and build something in the Power BI website as well. If I press get data, I have opportunity to get data from databases, different databases. I have opportunity to get data, oops, sorry, to get data from files or from services like MailChimp, like uh, Adobe Analytics, a lot, lots of those things. Uh, some of these actually added quite Recently, Adobe Analytics, I think, had been uh, released yesterday. So the uh, good thing about Power BI website is that it's get updated uh, every day. Every day you log in, you will see new changes, and it's quite great. So everything that you see here in the Power BI is also visible through mobile as well. So if you have uh, dashboards and you have shared that through uh, through some other users, they can see that in web browser or they can see that through mobile devices as well, right? So let's go through some new features of Power BI. I'm going through new features and then uh, I'll show them through a demo if you have time as well. Okay, so what's new in Power BI? So this is the kind of Power BI uh, view that you have seen. Uh, this uh, Power BI desktop and Power BI website, these are all in, on a frequent uh, changes based on Microsoft product team efforts. Uh, there are actually some new data connectors added, some new data transformations, visualization improvements are kind of improvements that are available in new Power BI. Uh, and Analysis services, services tabular live connection is the new one. Data modeling enhancement, publishing to Power BI website, you've seen that right now. Importing Excel contents like importing Power View, Power Pivot, Power Query, and some query editor enhancement. These are new changes in Power BI. So let's go through them. Uh, some new data connectors. These are the uh, newest data connectors available like Zendesk, Twilio, uh, QuickBooks Online, this kind of software as a service, and some Azure data sources like Azure HD Insight, Spark, and Azure SQL Data Warehouse. These are the newest connectors that are available. Uh, some new data transformation available is, for example, you can do some text transformation like 
getting part of the text, getting a range of text, last characters of that, for example, first four characters, five characters, these kind of transformation. These transformation are available in Power Query for Excel as well, and they have been available in Power Query uh, before uh, as well. This only added to the GUI. Power Query has a scripting language called M, and in that M you can do these changes and any other changes as well, many, many any type of actually transformation, but this recently has been added to GUI and make your life easier to do those kind of transformation. You can define join types in actually uh, Power Query type of editor. So when you join, when you merge a couple of tables in Power Query, you can uh, define what are the join kinds of uh, those couple of tables, for example, is it right join, right join, left join, full other join, inner join, these kind of uh, changes. Before, there were only available left join and inner join. So this change is already applied to Power Query for Excel as well, so you will have that as part of Power Query with Excel. Uh, if you have uh, your text uh, files coded, let's say, for example, with double code, because you have some address lines and those address lines have some comma between and having that in a CSV file means that your number of columns might change so it's better to have that in a uh, quotation then uh, this is actually supported so that if you choose that code style to CSV then it supported quotations but at the moment it just support double code as the surrounding character for that code style, which I believe will be uh, some uh, customization on this will be available quite soon. And some new visualization. These four are the four newest visualization components, uh, not components, elements in uh, Power BI. Uh, a donut chart and a waterfall chart, uh, area chart, and the metrics. So these four are quite, uh, quite uh, self-explanatory. You know what donut and area chart and metrics are and how to use them. But waterfall chart is also has been uh, in the visualization market for a while, but you might not have an idea where to use that. So let me show you an example of using a waterfall chart. So I have an Excel file here. This Excel file contains a cash flow data. So in this Excel file, uh, it's quite simple Excel file. I have a start of the period with uh, cash flow of $5,000. And then for each month, we have up and downs. And the cash flow changes from base to be something else, and then end up the period. So I want to analyze this actually up and downs and the cash flow in a chart. So uh, I can have different charts for that, but uh, this uh, waterfall chart is one of the charts that serves this purpose quite good. So let me close this existing Power BI desktop file. So I want to use that Excel cash flow data as the source and build a waterfall chart on top of that. So I get data from that Excel file. So cash flow data is the source here. So it shows me a view of that data. You can see that this is the view of data that I have. I want this, so I just click on edit. You can load directly. I just need to click on edit. Um, so this is quite a simple view of that. I don't want to do any changes. I just want to keep that as it is. So close and apply. It was better to rename that table name, but 
let's keep that simple. Uh, so in data tab, I see that table. It's just a single table with that data. I want to change the data type of that to be, sorry, the format of that to be currency for the rest as well, but I don't use the rest in my visualization. I just use cash flow. So I go to my report, and in my report, I actually bring a waterfall chart. So in this waterfall chart, I have just category and y-axis. So for category, I have period. And for y-axis, I want to show the cash flow, right? So you see that cash flow is going up and down. The only problem in this chart at the moment is that this is uh, sorted the category based on the alphabet alphabetical order. This is the default order where you don't set the order for columns. April, August, which I don't want this to be. I want to start at the first, total at the end, and name, column actually, sorry, uh, month to be uh, in a proper order. So I can define that order. I can say that this period be sorted by another column, but I don't have another column. These are sorted, fortunately, in my data source. So I can just add an index to this data source and use that as the sorting column. So what I do, I go to Edit Query, and I add the column. I add the index column. So this is my index column. As as you see, it's quite easy to add an index column. I just go to Add Column and add an index. And then close and apply. So I have my index column here right now. Now what I want to use this index column for, I want to use that for sorting this period. So I go to the Modeling tab. I say period should be sorted by index. Okay, and then I go to the report. And you see that this is refreshed automatically. So I have start 5K actually starting cash flow. Then we have down, ups, up, down, down, ups, and the total is here. So it's quite good visualization, especially for financial cash flow information that is added into the Power BI. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Uh, we have some new formattings also. That's a good uh, type of formatting visualization that we can have. I'll apply those on some of the visualization that I have. Uh, let's open the previous file. Don't save it. Let me open an existing one. So I have another visualization, another report here, which is based on FIFA World Cup 2014 uh, World Cup in Brazil. Uh, I'm a fan of FIFA, so I built some uh, visualization on top of that. I'm not sure if you are, but uh, here are some visualization built on top of the results of FIFA World Cup game. As you can see, I have some actually type of uh, editing here. For example, let's go to this chart. So in this chart, if I want to do formatting, I can go to the formatting tab. Here I have some uh, formatting here. In, For example, here I can set the background color. I can change that to whatever I want this to be. And I can set transparency as well. I can turn off the title or turn it on. I can even change the title to something. I can put a background for the title. Let's say background of the title is this. The foreground of the title, for four color of the title, let's say, is something like that. Okay, and I can put that in the middle. You see these changes are applied. So it's quite good. And I can even apply some data colors here. So I can apply a color for all actually columns, or I can set a color for each column. For example, these are countries, Argentina, 
Algeria, Australia, Austria, uh, Germany, all those kind of things. So I can change these colors based on their company, sorry, based on their companies. So it's quite easy to do and it's quite beneficial because in Power View, in Power View for Excel, this feature is not available. In Power, uh, sorry, in previous performance point type of dashboards, these are also, these were not available as well. So changing these to a custom colors is really useful things to have. And you can even pick a color as you want from this wide variety of the color. So as you see, we have quite a lot of formatting options available here and uh, you can even decide if you want to have the legend or if you don't. So I have the line chart here and the column chart and this shows me that legend. You can decide where you want this legend to be in the bottom, in the left, right, all over the place. As you can see, we have quite a lot of formatting here. This formatting is different based on the chart and the visualization item that you are in. For example, if I click on map, I have some different items here. I can define category labels on the map and this shows me the map actually labels. Again, I have uh, data colors, I can turn off uh, title, those kind of things. For some of these, we don't have any special formatting. For example, if this be a card, we just have the background, so just the background color. So this depends on the type of visualization that you work with, right? So custom colors, as you've seen, I showed you. And the title, background, for color, transparency, you can define all of this. Uh, just a quick note here, if you are creating Donut chart or pie chart, this is not a good practice to have Donut chart or pie chart in your visualization, uh, especially if you have many categories. Only do that if you have uh, a small number of categories, three, four, two categories, and their values are quite distinguishable. Uh, otherwise, your pie chart or Donut chart won't be useful. And color saturation, you've seen that I showed you through a demo of POPs database that you can highlight part of your uh, column chart or some other charts with actually that color saturation. And you can insert image, text, and hyperlinks. It's quite easy to do. So if you just want to add something in your report, you can insert an image, bring that from somewhere, or you can build a text box and put that text box as a title of your chart, uh, sorry, report. And you can undo and redo uh, reports. This only works on the report side, not on the modeling and not on the uh, query editor. So it's only on the report side, but if I go back to my report here and I say undo, this remove that text box. If I do another undo, this remove some other changes that I made. I have that redo undo options here, which is quite useful. And SSAS tabular live connection. I'll just like to show you how that works. So Anasa Services uh, connection has two types of connections in Power BI. So here I have, uh, let's close this. I can connect to analysis services, especially the tabular one, in two different ways. For multidimensional, you can just connect through the, to that um, with offline. I would say offline way of doing that. Why I say offline? Because if I get the data, if I choose analysis services connection, and if I connect to my server, let's say tabular server, this option, select item and get data from multidimensional or tabular model, is offline way of connection. 
what, uh, what I mean by outline is that if I press OK, in this window I actually see my databases. This is, let's say, Adventure Works sample analysis services database. I expand that, takes a while, and I see models, but I cannot choose a model. I have to go through that model, and I have to choose dimensions one by one and load them into Power BI. So they they actually treat it as separate data, uh, and I have to relate them later on. This is fine, but I can do much better when I have that model built. And instead of actually bring, bringing uh, them one by one, I can bring everything in that model directly, especially if I have a tabular connection. So the way to do that is actually using the other type of tabular connection, which is tabular model live connection. So in this live connection, I connect again, I use the model, and I just use the model, and this will show me all the fields here that I can use in my table. When I use live connection, I don't see a report tab, or I don't see another tab here uh, to work with. It's just the direct connection to the, uh, to the <coughs> analysis services tabular. We are quite close to Finish. So relationship diagram, you have seen that. That's a new thing in Power BI Desktop. And publish feature. You can even import Excel contents, import your uh, Power Pivot, Power View, or other stuff. This has been released uh, just a week ago. You can import them. Uh, there are some limitations in the import. For example, if you have hierarchies in your Power Pivot model that are not supported, so will not be transferred, those type of stuff synonyms, KPIs, those kind of things. Uh, go through this limitation. We don't have time to go through that. We can go through that. MDX and DAX queries are supported. You can write these queries. It's not, this is not working with live connection. This should be work only with offline connection. And there are some changes in uh, the editor. You can group actually your Power Query editors, and uh, you can actually uh, ungroup them. You can split your queries and use them later on. And you can you can have some icons in your query as well. Moving measure is also another enhancement added into the uh, Power BI. Okay, so that was almost everything in the. Uh, new features of Power BI. There are some references here if you want to study, and uh, I encourage you to read this if you uh, want to learn more about Power BI. I'm writing a Power BI online book. There are Power BI videos uh, with Power BI, Microsoft Power BI team, and what's new in Power BI. I have a couple of posts that feature all the features that I explained. Okay. Uh, that was a quick run through. Is there any questions? And do we have time, Paris, to go through those um, questions? We can just do a couple of questions, and maybe I can send those questions over to you, so that maybe you can yeah, okay. blog post if you want, or maybe answer them. Yeah, 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 I can whatever answer them. Best. Um, so yeah, thanks again for the presentation. That was super helpful. I think we got a lot of out of lot out of it. Um, just a few questions, and then we'll wrap it up in a few minutes. Uh, by probably next format. So let's uh, I'll just quickly some questions. So one of the questions was that there's the free version and then there's the paid version. So what's the benefit of the paid version? Uh, that's a good question. There are uh, everything that I told today, everything that I showed today is available in free version. There are some features which are available in premium version or pro, pro version I would say. And those features are actually this. So let me use my Power BI thing. So if I get data, if I want to connect to databases like Azure SQL Data Warehouse, this is something that you 
have to actually use Pro version to get that. If you uh, want to use, for example, uh, some part, of, some kind of these type of connections, are uh, those are available through that. If you just have a look in Power BI website and you go to that pricing page, if I could find that, this shows you some uh, differences between the paid version and the free version. In free version, you have limitation of one gigabyte for the data, but for paid version, you can have 10 gigabyte and um, per user actually, and uh, you pay actually $10 per user per month for that, and there are some collaborative features in pro version of that. All right, that's awesome. Thanks. Uh, this last question, and then I'll send you other open questions for the email. So maybe if you want, you can do a blog or Twitter. Yeah. Does that work? Okay. All right. So yes. last question: uh, Can you add any code or script to Power BI? So for example, can you add D3.js script to Power BI? And if this works, can you discuss how? Uh, at the moment, actually, this doesn't support those. There is a Power BI REST, actually, uh, API development type of things that you can find uh, through, but I don't uh, think that this is supporting adding any scripts at the moment. So uh, let me just show you Power BI REST development site. So you can go through this uh, Power BI REST API. It's quite beneficial. You can connect from your application into the Power BI and do some stuff like that. But it doesn't support uh, adding the scripts in that. But I believe this is in list of Microsoft Power BI team to do, especially this and especially white labeling. These kind of things are features that are uh, on demand. And I believe Microsoft team is doing quite a lot of effort to do that. All right, awesome. Um, so I'll send you the rest of the questions or email. Uh, okay. Do you have any parting words for the audience? Just any last minute thoughts? Uh, I'll actually uh, write a blog post and I'll uh, put the questions and answers there after you send me the Paris and the blog post information is here and uh, my email address, Twitter, and LinkedIn, all those kind of things. And these slides are shared. And that's it. Nothing special for me. Okay. Thanks for attending. And thanks to you for uh, hosting this session and giving me the opportunity. No, of course. Thanks for your time. And uh, that was great. So that's it. We can wrap it up. Thanks so much, everyone, for attending. And thanks, Rizal, for your time. Yeah, thanks. Have a good day. You too. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.